Hi everybody, I'm Nick Bonner uh, with treestuff.com. This is Jeff Inman. Uh, Jeff is an ISC athlete. He was second in the world last year at ITCC and he won the first annual Arbor Fest uh, direct head-to-head -head footlocking. What was your time last night? 8.3 seconds. 8.3 seconds, that's pretty fast. Well anyways, we're here at the treestuff.com DIY micro rigging lab. We're gonna learn a little bit about span rigging, uh, which kind of dovetails into Taylor's talk uh, that we did earlier about uh, double whip tackle. Uh, so if you haven't watched that one, definitely watch that one. That might be a good primer mm -hmm. for this one. But uh, Jeff, outline the problem and uh, tell us what we're gonna do to solve it. So what we have today is a uh, our limb here. Uh, we need to remove it uh, because it's dead. Uh, however, we have a structure below. Now our main rigging point is up high and it's not exactly of the greatest angle. So we've had to build some level of complex rigging system to avoid the structures over here, but get it down safely into our drop zone down below. So what I'm gonna demonstrate is kind of how we used to do this before we started to think about a little bit more complex rigging techniques. Uh, so traditionally, we would put a block up high and try to distribute the force through the tree as best we can, try to build compression into the unions uh, but a lot of it was kind of a, a butt hitching top down type movement. So in something like this scenario, we might come out here, put a half hitch and a run and bowling around the limb. However, it's not like we can really take this whole piece from down here because if we did, it's just gonna fall down and and crush the roof of our house here, right? So what we would do, put it in the Porter app. We'd have a climber who more than likely because of the tie-in point would have to be out here pulling kind of a, a less than favorable angle and is really close to the rigging, making a cut, cutting the limb in half. And then again, because of how the rigging system kind of has to work using the highest rigging or the highest rigging point. They'd probably try to throw a tag line on to so pull it away from the house. Onto the end of the limb, exactly, to try to pull it away from the house. So what you have now is you kind of have to have now multiple people on the ground, which hopefully you have anyway. You've got crew big oh, enough to handle hard, yeah. this this task. But as this comes down. Are we going to cut it? Can we yeah, cut it? Yeah, please cut it. All right. So, as we make a notch, and then as we cut it, I'm going to have my ground personnel put some tension out here. That's you, lady. To keep it from swinging much, and then it comes free, right? But look at all that, like, shake and force that it's putting into the into the tree so now we'll lower it down thank you as somebody else is controlling the tagline and pulling it away from our hazard into house? our open drop zone it works it's not the most efficient way but if one piece of of the system kind of goes wrong right if it comes off incorrectly i've got a climber perched right there at the cut with the potential of, right, my safety factor basically is my the, person uh, on the ground this off of that. holding that tagline and not letting it come back towards me. Um, so what we're gonna demonstrate now is span rigging. So a lot of the trees that I find myself working on are in relatively tight spaces. And because of our company having a a relatively small crew, we have to find creative ways to get big limbs to the ground because it's easier to process these limbs on the ground than it is up in the tree. The other thing we always strive for is to have the best work positioning we possibly can for the cuts that we're trying to make. For the weight. So again, replicating this system, we have a limb now that's further over here that really I'm gonna say was not our favorable way to set up our rigging to try to do a, a butt hitching top down again because we've got another limb below it and there's just a bunch of traffic underneath. So my ground guys 
have tied on. We'll say stop or not. So again, it doesn't run through the block. My climber will climb out, install a block on the end of the limb, run it, so the running in through the block, and then we're going to do a running bowling up here on this other limb. So again, kind of piggybacking off of the webinar earlier, we, we've built a double whip tackle into our rigging. We're creating mechanical advantage so that now my climber, instead of being out here and making a cut, my climber is now down here closer to the trunk, has a more favorable rope angle, can make a notch on the top side of the limb, and this, this lowering line, basically with a GRCS or some sort of mechanical advantage device at the base of the tree can act as a crane more or less to lift a larger limb up into the rigging system and then as it comes down it'll basically balance out in the belly of the rope between these two rigging points. Can I have the saw again? Thank you. All right so again I see where my block is and I see where my terminated end is, so I'm going to come pretty much right underneath those. I'm going to use my hand strength to simulate the GRCS here. You are so strong, Nick. I was really hoping you'd do that. I feel really well suited to this. I think you're greatly suited for this. It's, so I, I think it's uh, worth noting here that you're aiming this notch towards the center point, not Correct. towards either of these anchors. Correct, yes, because the goal here is to have this piece come into the center of my rigging, so into the into the dead center of the belly of the rope. So now, should, what, should I be applying force? Should I be cranking? So in this scenario, I, I have now made my notch, so I don't really want any, any force down here, right? Because I don't want it to mess up my notch. But now that I've made it and I'm prepared to make a back cut, I want my ground guy, Nick, if you could go ahead and start pre-tensioning the rope. And okay. when are you, how are you gonna know when to tell me to stop pre-tensioning the rope? When I see the limb, how I typically approach this is when I see the limbs start to, to move a little, as I see so this- So we've seen the sling tighten. Yeah, as we've seen the sling tighten and, and you're watching this slack come out. Okay, so that's good right there. I don't want him to start pulling up too much too early because as I'm making this cut from the underside and it's lifting this limb up, what I don't want is having so much force generated pulling this up that, I'm, that I'm destroying the fibers that's holding this and causing a barber chair situation aloft. Okay, it's dangerous enough on the ground, it's far more dangerous aloft. So but what we you did want... see the tip of this raise a couple degrees. Right. And I think that's really important because it, it tells us that we know that the majority of this weight now is in the system. Correct, correct. So what I'll do is start making my back cut and set up my hinge wood and then now my climber if I'm the climber can get kind of in a safe direction out of the what we refer to as the triangle of death as this is coming up we're outside of the rigging so Nick if you go ahead and start tensioning this up it's pulling the limb and allowing the hinge wood to have this be a static, controlled movement up into the tree, up into my rigging. So I just felt part of the hinge break. I can't tell if all of it broke, but it, it definitely felt it as it started to come towards the center, it separated and it's, it's way more in the system now. Okay, and that's the goal. We want this to, just like when we're felling a tree and as that notch closes and when the hinge wood finally breaks, if we've set this up correctly, this should function in the same way in which when that notch closes and that hinge wood breaks, it's now in the system. So I think I've maxed out the GRCS. You've maxed I, out the GRCS. I, I can't pull any harder than okay. this. Okay. So in this situation, we have left a little too much hinge wood. We don't want to then just keep trying to crank with the GRCS because we're going to make a bad situation real quick. So my climber again, because most of this, this weight is now in the rigging system, can come over and probably make a little cut to free the system. And it actually popped up a little there. Yep, so we had a little, little too much tension for what, how much the piece weighed. But now it's floating in the system. So now 
Uh, the ground personnel, Nick, if you could go ahead and start to lower that. All right, the climber might have to push that around a little bit, but we can have a nice, controlled, slow descent. Okay, push that around. And you see it's, it's coming down as a much larger piece into the safe drop zone away from the building. So what we've effectively done is made our job site a lot more efficient because we were able to take a larger limb out of the tree and let more people on the ground process this to get it to the chipper. And you know what comes next is the chipper winch, right? Because you yep. just winch her straight in then? Yep, if you've got a winch or if you've got a mini or you've got something like that that can grab it and take it the rest of the way to where you're processing the material, whether with it's a grapple truck or a chipper, uh, however your company's set up, but that at least gets a big piece on the ground and theoretically less cuts means a faster job. So. Awesome. Jeff, thank you so much. Thank uh, you. Span rigging with Jeff Inman. Uh, congratulations again on your win last night. I know that that was months of training realized mm -hmm. and uh, that you were probably a little nervous going up against Kyle and uh, I'm glad it worked out for you. Congrats. Yeah, no, Kyle's a fantastic climber. So it was good to wind up there at the end with him. So I'm glad all your hard work paid off. Yeah. Thanks everybody. Thank you.